welcome to the Actually You Can podcast. I'm Miff Galloway, a performance coach passionate about supporting ambitious and high-performing women just like you who know they have untapped potential just waiting to be unleashed. If you're looking to massively up-level your performance in all areas of life, you've come to the right place. My goal on this podcast is to take you beneath the surface so you can connect with yourself on a deeper level while providing you with valuable insights and the tools necessary to navigate life's challenges and go after your goals with strength, clarity, and wisdom. If you're ready to uncover the truth which lies underneath so you can recognize your powerful feminine leadership style, pursue your goals unapologetically, and thrive in every aspect of your life, hit the follow button and get ready to explore the incredible possibilities that lie within you. Together, we'll uncover your next steps in achieving peak performance, because actually, you can. Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Actually, You Can. Today, I have the absolute pleasure of connecting with Elizabeth Makepeace a healer of over 25 years who is on a mission to empower people to raise their vibration so they are guided by their own intuition and live a fulfilled life. We're going to discuss how you can achieve your goals faster by tuning into your energy and spirituality. So if you're curious about energy and magic, then this conversation will be right up your alley. Welcome to the show, Elizabeth. It's so wonderful to have you here today. Oh, I'm so pumped to actually be here, Miff. It's going to be a fantastic conversation. Uh, really looking forward to the chat. And so you've overcome, attracted and achieved some pretty incredible things in your life. And so to kick things off, I would love for you to share what would be, say, one or two examples of something magical that you would say has happened in your life. I have had so many magical things happen in my life that I don't know where to start. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I have had everything from three shooting stars when I was asking for confirmation that I was on the right track to um, having a rabbit at the front of my house after making the decision that I was going to talk about following the white rabbit and then the next day there was this rabbit like it was actually a hare right out the front of my house uh, looking at me through the window to uh, meeting the beautiful love of my life on the beach in a really fairy tale romantic experience. We were the only two on the beach. He walked past and waved at me. Uh, I'm a healer of 25 years. My maiden name is Pain or was Pain. And his last name is Make Peace. So when you are really stepping into the magic of who you are and aligning with your higher self wisdom, these are the things that happen to you on a regular basis. It actually just becomes part of your daily life. That literally sounds like something out of a fairy tale or something that only is reserved for rom-coms, yet it is your life. And so I'm interested to hear more about that. Obviously, you've been do- been working as a healer for over 25 years. I'm interested to hear more about that journey. Have you always been connected, I guess, to the world around you and I guess identifying some of those synchronicities and signs or is that something that you came across at some point in your life? I think I've always been connected, but, you know, you don't always know Mm. that you're connected. It's something that in, you know, going back and looking, you know, and reflecting and going, ah, okay, that's why that happened or, or, you know, I actually did know that and I didn't realise. So growing up, uh, I had a couple of experiences. One of them I remember distinctly, the, the very first experience I remember was walking through the lounge room and, you know, the TV's on, it was a black and white TV and um, it was, I was born in 71 and they were either doing like a revival of of Woodstock or there, there was something about Woodstock on and all the hippies were there, you know, doing the free love and all that sort of stuff. And I remember distinctly, I must have been about seven years old and as I walked past, I had this thought, oh, I've come down too late. Mm. And then there was this like my myself, my conscious self went, come down from <laughs> where and too late for what? Like it was just like, what are you talking about, right? 
I also grew up with my dad on a kidney machine and he passed away when I was 15. But I had spent a lot of time, we used to put the dialysis machine together um, and I remember distinctly laying next to him crying, I don't want you to leave, I don't want you to to die. And, um, yeah, at 15 he passed away and it was like how did I know that was Mm going to happen? So I had all these little things happening um, but I'd never really clued in that it meant that I was connected Mm -hmm. to something, you know. Um, I had little things happening like, you know, I moved from Oleander Street to Oleander Drive. I um, I also had this really crazy couple of experiences. Cars and houses seemed to be my thing <laughs> and names. <laughs> and so I had a couple of experiences with cars, you know, like this lining up of, you know, one car I bought down here in Sydney, uh, but I lived up in Cairns in far north Queensland the woman I bought the car from, her last name was my stepfather's first name. She lived in Cairns Avenue. Uh, I was going to buy a previous car and uh, it fell through, but she lived in a totally different suburb to where I was. Uh, she lived in the same block of flats as the guy I was going to buy the first car from and he lived in 16 she lived in 19. So, like, one thing after the other was just, like, all these synchronicities I had the same with another car, you know, it's 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 what I call following the white mm-hmm. rabbit, right? Like it's being able to see the energy because now I recognise it, I see it as it's happening. But back then I was new and innocent and had no idea what was going on mm-hmm. and it was in hindsight that I recognised what was going on. That's incredible and I'm I'm so my brain wants to go 50,000 different ways here but I won't jump to Zed just now I'd love to learn how did you then start to dig more deeper into looking at those as uh, following the right white rabbit and looking more into I guess the things that were happening to you in your life were you like hang on there's something here or did you do some extra study or, or what was that the start of that journey for you it really was just experiential yeah. there wasn't anything that I that I went and studied, um, it was more, especially that first Mm. car, that one with the cans thing, it was like there were so (laughs) many coincidences, like even that we got got the car in Rockdale and I kept on seeing Rockdale every time I went past um, in the train. There was just so many things that I went, that was crazy, you know, and um, from there, as I developed more, because I've been doing this for 25 years now, right? And so as I developed more, I started becoming more aware in my present reality. And so there's this thing that is, it's hard to describe, but the way I describe it to people is, because now I see it as it comes up, it's like something illuminates. So it's like you can see it more clearly than everything around it. And so I now go, "Mm, just take note of that because that might lead to something else, you know, like it's sort of like following Mm. the breadcrumbs. And so something will illuminate and I go, okay, take note just in case that's part of a thread that, you know, my higher self is, is, you know, pulling me towards. So it's more of an experiential thing than anything that I've, you know, People say it's synchronicities, mm-hmm. right? But um, it, it's not something that I learned, you know, in a course or anything. Yeah. And I love that sort of stuff because, I mean, um, I grew up in a household that uh, both parents were doctors and so everything was very logical and science-based. And I remember when I got into yoga, the response was, oh, you'll get over that soon. <laughs> And I was like, no, no, it's been 15 years now. I'm not over that. And I've, if anything, I believe in it more and, and everything connected to it more. And I love how you've described it as looking at things that are illuminating in your life. Like, for example, something could stand out and you're like, I'm not quite sure why I'm seeing that amongst all the things. I think there's a stat that says something like at any point in time, in any given second, you're, there is 2.4 million pieces of information your brain can take in, yet it can only process about 130 bits or something like that. Regardless of the exact stats, mm. there is a reason why you're seeing the things that you're seeing. 
Mm, absolutely. And, you know, I, I've also been brought up in a family of logic. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, it's it's really interesting because my brain is quite, you know, my mind is quite logical and scientific as well. I, I'm not the typical woo-woo, you know, talk to crystal <laughs> sort of woman. <laughs> and so um, I, I tend to have quite a mathematical mm. brain. And so, you know, I spent a lot of time in my life actually trying to move, you know, I moved into quantum physics and epigenetics and, and the science around some of this stuff. And then I translate it into my own understanding from a spiritual perspective and then would desperately try and have conversations <laughs> with my brother about it. <laughs> and, of course, it just didn't work, right? But, you know, you try. <laughs> 100% people either are like, yes, I get it, I love this, or they look at you like you have three heads. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and so on, on that similar note then, you mentioned that you use those sort of signs as, as breadcrumbs. How have you done that? Have how have you used that same sort of philosophy with achieving goals? So I guess from a logical point of achieving goals, you know, you're told use the SMART goal framework, be really specific, make it measurable, attainable, realistic, time bound, all that sort of stuff. And you go, okay, logically, that's how you achieve a goal. But you and I both know that writing it out logically isn't necessarily the, the most effective way to achieve a goal. How would you combine what you know and your experience with how to achieve a goal effectively and as fast as possible? The fast as possible is a really interesting part because we are all, you know, smart goals, all of those things are so based in masculine energy and we're mm. such a, you know, um, our whole society is go, 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 be in active mm -hmm. mode. And that just leads to burnout, stress, anxiety. Look at the world at the moment, right? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's you know, there's so much chaos and so many, mm -hmm. you know, um, our, our nervous systems is totally deregulated, right? Like there's, there's mm -hmm. so much going on in our nervous system and we're not coping. Mm -hmm. When you look at the way nature works and, and let's bring in the mathematics side, right? So the nature works with um, the golden ratio. So we work on an accumulative process. So have you ever heard of the Fibonacci sequence? I have not and I would love to learn more. <laughs> <laughs> So it's actually a pattern, uh, a mathematical pattern, but it's based in, or it, it is the golden ratio, right? So it starts as numbers of 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21. It goes up. But what, how the, how the pattern works is, so you've got 0 and 1, and the way you you work out the formula is, to get the next number, you actually need to go back a step to move forward. <laughs> so you've got zero and one creates one. So then you step back again. So you've got one and one create two. And then you step back. So you've got two and one creates three. Yeah. Three and two creates five, right? So this is the Fibonacci sequence. And if you look at the, the way the pattern works, as you go into double numbers and triple numbers, because you're stepping back, but then those numbers have have started to increase, mm. there's this massive curve that happens because when you first start out, it looks like nothing's really happening and it's sort of mm. under the surface, like the, the seed that's under the uh, soil, right? But as you start getting into those double numbers and triple numbers, the curve becomes quite exponential right it, it's mm. accumulative and you start getting massive results really fast so that is a mathematical equation now I bring that into my spiritual stuff when you are moving forward you also need to stop and reflect on where you've been to be able to move forward right so there's an element of the masculine moving forward, 
but the feminine pausing, reflecting, receiving information before it then takes action. So when you're in this natural state of using the masculine and the feminine energy together, then those two combined means that you're more in alignment with your natural energy of the universe and the way nature works and grows. So you're in alignment with creation. So first of all, you want to know exactly what it is you want to create, but you need to be in this beautiful balance of looking at what it is you want to create, holding that focus and then looking at and and becoming that person now, right? Being able to see yourself as being that person, experiencing what what is that part of me doing right now? Who is she becoming? Who is she, you know, that that part. If I was, for example, looking for the love of my life, I would then go, the woman that already has that love, how does she feel? What does she believe about herself? What are some of the things that she does? What is her behaviours? All of those things. And then you start becoming that now. But you also need to reflect on your current reality and what's getting in the way, what's, what's holding you back. And often it's these old beliefs that are stuck in our unconscious of not good enough, not worthy, don't belong, you know, not feeling safe in some way that our unconscious has made this decision is holding on to from our childhood in some way or capacity could be generational could be from past lives all of the things but there's these things that are holding us back in limitation that we need to clean that energy up so that we can then take that actionable step towards what it is that we want to create I love how you've married together like about maybe nearly 10 podcast episodes with guests who I've talked about maybe goal setting or I've talked about masculine energy, feminine energy um, and laws of attraction and stepping into the person you want to become. You've just taken about 10 podcast episodes and summarized the framework into like two minutes. I love it. (laughs) But it's it's so true. Like it's so true in terms of there's so many dynamics at play like if we're just working in the logical smart goal way you know we're not honoring the natural tendencies of of who we are as humans having the balance of masculine and feminine energy we're not working with all of the resources around us we're only using essentially half our potential to be able to achieve our goals so I can definitely appreciate now more so how to really accelerate progress towards your goals you need to leverage everything that's available to you and that's not only your logical conscious mind but it's the subconscious and the energy around you Mm. and and also because when you're in your heart center when you're sitting in that space of your full potential uh your full potential is not just your identity and you know our unconscious has got all of this information in it right but it's still limited because it's only been able to access it from the experiences that you've had or mm-hmm. generations past or whatever. So it's still, it's got lots of information, but it's still limited. When you can access, you know, step into that oneness, uh, you know, as you were saying, the yoga, so meditate, meditative state of being present in the, um, in that energy of who you truly are and expand into what I call the superconscious. that's mm-hmm. that quantum field that, is that present moment you've now got access to all information and all codes Mm. throughout all of existence so now you've got this ability to have information come in that you may not have thought of Mm. that can just be an inspiration you know like next thing it's like oh I just had this amazing idea and through that, it's, it's because you've been accessing and allowing and receiving information that you've got access to, but we often limit ourselves because our mind thinks it's not safe to, uh, you know, to, to receive our, the unknown. So when you can access that part of yourself that's that higher wisdom, 
that's what collapsing time is all about, right? Because mm-hmm. next thing you're getting this download that you can go, wow, I didn't think of it that way. And now I've got, you know, a faster track. Yeah. And, and a really, I guess, probably relatable um, example I can think of when you share that is a lot of people say they have really great ideas in the shower or really great ideas when they're just out walking in nature. And if you look at mm. it's not the shower, it's the fact that you have probably one of the only times where you're not connected to a phone. You might have five minutes to yourself to have a, a uninterrupted stream of consciousness where you're just letting your mind wander and having no interrupted thoughts. It's because you're accessing something other than just the the limits of what your conscious mind is is thinking of. Mm, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> And so I'd love to hear about a goal that you set for yourself, an ambitious goal, let's go that, that you really used all the tools available to help you achieve. I'd love for you to take us on that journey. Uh, So that's a good question. (laughs) Which one am I going to choose? I would say actually I'm going to share the experience I had with Um, what most people would experience as um, a negative experience Mm. uh, is my journey through a brain tumour. So, you know, one of the things about being being human is that we have stuff happen, right? (laughs) (laughs) Stuff goes on. We, We are not perfect, right? We are here having the experience. And so... Um, to maybe three years ago now, I think it was, I went through this experience where I was having some pretty heavy um, pains in my in my head, like pressure headaches, and I'm one to, you know, do my own thing, but I also, you know, I marry it up to um, using all resources, but I'm one to look at my own health first, and then I'll go and access um, other information if I'm if I need to. So I was looking after my mum, and um, she. I took her to the doctor, and I mentioned to the doctor I had this weird thing happening with my ear, and you know, a, a little bit of an ache in my head when, you know, pressure headache. And this doctor happened to say, well, it doesn't sound like anything medical, which was enough for me not to go to the doctor again, right? <laughs> I was I was a remedial massage therapist for 25 years. And so um, I went, oh, maybe it's my atlas, you know, the first mm. vertebrae of my neck. So that's out, you know, and I just started looking at all these alternatives. I was getting massage and chiropractic and acupuncture and then I thought maybe it's my version of menopause so I was doing Ayurvedic medicine went to a medical intuitive you name it I even checked um, dentistry to see if it was my jaw was out (laughs) you name it I did it and it got to this point where I had a moment where I sort of lost my balance and my Mm -hmm. daughter lost it at me right and she's like Mm -hmm just go and go to the doctor and see what it is. And then, you know, if it's not anything then, or, you know, depending on what it is, you can do your own thing, right? It happened again when I was at home by myself. So I thought, yeah, I need to go and Mm -hmm. see the doctor. Now, this process, unconsciously, I have this inner knowing that everything works out for me I'm just always Mm. protected and looked after and guided Uh, there is you know it's not even something I consciously think of so I go to the doctor now this is in in the sort of COVID times it was Mm. you know it wasn't we weren't in lockdown but it was still in that sort of peak time and the magic that happened was unbelievable it was so I just looked up Google to see which was the closest doctor to me, Uh, got in that day, which was like unheard of, went to a doctor that just happened to have done four years in neuroscience, uh, neurosurgery prior to being a GP, right? (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Yeah, looked in my eyes, said, yeah, there's definitely something going on. You need to go and have a CT scan tomorrow. Went, went to CT the next day, they rang me up half an hour later, said, you know, go to emergency, you've got a four and a half centimetre brain tumour, you need to get it out right now. Uh, he said, the doctor said, pack your bags, you will not find a neurosurgeon 
in um, emergency on a Friday afternoon. Who turns up but a neurosurgeon, looks at me, does all the tests, looks at me and says, how does someone like you get, you know, a piece of fruit like this in the back of your head? Uh, You should be, you know, um, balance, coordination issues, blackouts and seizures um, for how big that is. So uh, he let me go home. Uh, I had, you know, the whole weekend to work out what I was going to do, decided I'm getting it out, went into the hospital, uh, forgot my chemical free, you know, I'm I'm a bit of a natural girl, forgot all Mm -hmm. my chemical free stuff, walked into the ward shower and someone had left their manuka honey shampoo and conditioner <laughs> so I got to use that um the last nurse I saw on the ward her name was Angel not abbreviated <laughs> the first nurse I opened my eyes to her name was Crystal um <laughs> yep the surgeon said she she opened my head and it popped out at her she got the whole thing I woke up no pain uh, no follow-up surgery, no follow-up anything, no treatments, nothing. Um, I was showering and walking around trauma ward by myself straight away. They were all apologising <laughs> that I was still there because it was policy that, that I had to stay for a certain amount of time. Um, I even had a five-figure payout come into my account while I was laying in the hospital bed. So I had uh, $12,990 <laughs> drop into my account just as I'm supposed to have a couple of months off, um, you know, my business. It was just honestly one thing after the other. It was, and it just flowed. It was such a magical experience. And I know that that's because as soon as I found out, I focused on my health. I focused on the mm. best result. I focused on you know, this being, it was not once that I went into fear that, oh my gosh, you know, this could be life-threatening. There was nothing at all. I just flowed with it the whole way through. That is such an incredible story. Like I, I just caught myself just, you can't help but smile at some of the things that happen. And I have a lot of friends who are very spiritually connected and they tell me just what happens in their day to day. And I can't help but laugh. I'm like, you can't make this stuff up. Like, come on, try and (laughs) logically explain this and tell me, like, try and disprove this and, and, and all that sort of stuff. I love the names of the people, even the doctors who you woke up to, like, that's incredible. (laughs) And so, (laughs) and for someone who is like, oh, they're just all coincidences. What would you share to someone to to open their mind and expand their awareness to potentially something that's bigger than just a coincidence? Well, it's all intention, right? It's mm. um, if you believe that it's a coincidence, then it will be. <laughs> it's you know whatever we believe is what we experience, and so. Mm. I see all of this and it and it becomes more and more my reality because, one, I have total trust and faith in there being more than just me here, right? Like yeah. we are more than human. We are part of a whole collective, you know, that there's some sort of universal consciousness that's got mm-hmm. some massive intelligence, you know, whatever this thing that we're in is so highly constructed and intelligent that none of us could phantom it you know like just just the way a plant grows how can you you know the 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 way the sun rises and falls and the moon like all of these things Mm. that are so um beautiful and magical you know and so if you don't see that then you won't see it it's mm. just as simple as that. And whatever we believe is what we create. You know, I remember having conversations with my brother about all of this way back and he had this thing called, he called it the um, the cosmic joker. <laughs> so he's, you know, he's very scientific, he's, he's a normal, you know, normal human and uh but he sort of dabbles in this every so often he thinks that you know he's he knows a bit of it about it but he had this thing called the cosmic joker and he said he believed that there was an actual joker energy that would stuff him up in the in life 
So he said, if I'm driving and I'm rushing to get somewhere um, or my shoelace is untied and I need to tie it up, then I will get every single green light. But <laughs> if I'm, if, you know, if I'm, sorry, if I'm, when when he's trying to get somewhere, he said, if I'm trying to get somewhere, then I will get every single red light. But if I need to mm. stop and tie my shoelace, I will get every single green light. And he had the same with um, the lift. He said, at work, if I um, am waiting for the lift and I need to get somewhere, it will never come. But if I push the button and go and sit on the lounge that's in the foyer, it comes <laughs> straight away, right? Now, this is a belief. Mm. It's a belief, right? We Whatever we believe and what we focus on, is what is created and mm. I can even give you a scientific explanation of that if you're interested. Love it. Let's do it. <laughs> yep. So there's, have you ever heard of the double slit experiment? No, I'm learning so much today. <laughs> <laughs> so there's this thing called the double slit experiment and it, don't quote me, but I think it was in the 1930s somewhere around that that, that the first mm-hmm. time they sort of did this. And I'm just going to really summarise, mm-hmm. uh, but you can look it up on Google, right? It's, it's a very well-known scientific research experiment they did. So these scientists decided that they were going to check out what would happen if they had a laser and they had a piece of paper mm-hmm. with two slits, like they just cut two slits in the piece of paper and they put the laser through through the slits to see what would happen. And, of course, they moved the piece of paper and on the white wall behind them were two lines where the laser had gone through, right? Now, apparently, scientists do this all the time. They leave their equipment on, right? So <laughs> apparently they left their equipment on and I don't know what they did. They might have gone to lunch or whatever they did. But they come back from wherever they went And they come back and there's a mess of, you know, waves or like particles of this laser all over the back of the wall. And they're like, what happened? Mm. Well, what they discovered was when you're observing the laser, the laser becomes a pinpoint focus. It's a focal point and Mm. and a particle of laser. But when no one is observing the laser, it is a it's a wave instead of a particle. <laughs> so so it's this wave of potential because it's waiting wow. to have something focus on it. Yeah. So bring that into the sci- into the spiritual side, right? If we have no intention, if we have no um you know, we're just being and doing nothing, we've got all this potential that the universe is waiting for us to experience and make a choice around. So we never will experience our potential because we've got lots of potential. We've just got to make a decision about what it is that we want to create. (laughs) But if we then may have a belief, even just the intention of that belief now becomes a singularity. It becomes a focal point in our reality. And now we have created that focal point because now it's a pinpoint accuracy and we now are looking at that perspective and observing it. So that's why we can have so many different, like so many different religions, so many different beliefs because they're all truth. Mm. We're just focusing on what the truth is for us. Oh, wow. I've definitely got a Google page up with that, that double split <laughs> yeah. experiment now. It's it's yeah. fascinating. I've never heard it described in that way. I've normally had like goal setting explained in terms of the RAS and, you know, you get what you're focused on and stuff like that. But I love how you, you tied this in too. Like we have so much potential that's just waiting to be focused on something really powerful. And so, yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. I'm, my mind's a little bit blown at the moment. It's going a couple of different directions. So I, I really appreciate that. And so I'd love to hear, I mean, we've spoken about the blending masculine, feminine energy, spirituality, as well as the logic and the science in terms of achieving goals. And so I'd love to hear from you, what's a really actionable step someone can do in the next 24 to 48 hours 
to help them achieve their goals faster using everything that you've shared today? What's one one tip that you could share with someone? The first thing is is definitely what I was just talking about. So mm. make the decision what is it you want to create mm. because it's not outside of you. It's mm. it's you and your choice. So decide what it is that you want to create and then go for it. But when I say go for it, it's meaning focus on it every day, allow it to be part of your reality. Like mm-hmm. even, you know, a, a good practice is, you know, when we wake up in the morning, uh, we are in that space where we're sort of half awake, half asleep. And that's a nice place to mm-hmm. do a little bit of inner programming because mm. our unconscious is still not quite, you know, um, take, hasn't taken over really. And so in that sort of um, twilight space, mm. you can start feeling what it feels like. So you can lay there in bed and just start going into the feeling of what it is you want to create. So just say you make the decision, I want to live a life that I love even something just as general as that, lay in bed before you get out of bed and just feel what does it feel like as I lay here to be in this space of living the life I love. Mm -hmm. Have the images of what it is that you want to achieve and what it feels like to have that end result already completed. You know, it's, it's what you're doing is you're rewiring your neural pathways. It's actually getting your nervous system to know that it's actually safe, it's mm-hmm. it's comfortable, and that it's doable. So it's it's actually bringing that pattern into your life. And the more you do that every morning, the more the universe will allow all of those particles to start coming together. And that's how manifestation works. And you know, you're you're collapsing time. Mm-hmm. Again, so many thoughts rushing to my mind as you're sharing this because, you know, I I used to and I still often struggle with the question, where do you see yourself in two to five years? Because I'm like, I don't see myself anywhere. I know how I want to feel. And as long as I keep mm. having that feeling, that's all I care about. I'm not attached to anything material. I have a, an idea of how some things make me feel yes and what standards I have in for a fulfilling relationship and in my work and that sort of thing. But I love the approach of focusing on how you want to feel in your life and chances are when you do that and you have a really clear mind you'll get some pictures and images that come to your mind and I from what I can gather it's it's about trusting that trusting what comes up when you're in that frequency and what's illuminating itself to you when you're in that frequency because chances are that's meant for you you're seeing it for a reason absolutely and and it's also you know the trick is being aware of what you know, being able to let go of the how around it mm, and yes. um, and letting go of, you know, there, there is a little bit of a trick to it because there's a true choice where you're experiencing everything that you want to experience, but then there's this part where our unconscious can get in the way and decide that it wants, you know, like I want love because I'm lonely, I want money because I'm in, you know, I'm I'm poor, whatever it might be. And so being able to find that true choice of how you want to feel outside of that filter of lack, Mm. that's when you really get into the flow and be part of the universe, you know. Oh, yes. Uh, Thank you for touching on the different energies too because it's something I've spoken about with a couple of other guests in podcasts. It's I don't know anyone who's shamed themselves into doing anything super meaningful and passionate with their lives. It's I'm in the health um, and fitness industry as a personal trainer and I have while clients who are saying I need to lose weight because I hate the way I look and I hate my body does spark some initial momentum, they do not succeed long term. <laughs> mm, yeah, so true. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much, Elizabeth, for your time today and sharing your expertise and your bit of magic with us. I, I feel so inspired and lit up from our conversation today and I have no doubt the listeners are too. But thank you so much for everything that you've shared. And if listeners are keen to learn more about 
the work that you do and experience more of your magic, where can they do that? Uh, so you can find me on Facebook. That's my main home. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm um, Elizabeth Eleanor and Eleanor is spelt a little bit differently. So it's E-L-E-N-O-R. Uh, and that's my website as well. So Elizabeth Eleanor, E-L-E-N-O-R.com.au. Amazing. And I'll put that link in the show notes as well. But thank you so much again, Elizabeth, for your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's been a pleasure. It's been fun. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. I hope this was helpful. If you thought of someone while listening to this podcast, I would be so grateful if you could share this episode with them. While you're doing that, please also take a moment to leave a review on the podcast if you haven't yet already. It takes less than a minute and it means so much to me and helps this podcast to reach more people just like you. Thank you so much for that and I'll see you in the next episode. In the meantime, go out and achieve every dream you have because actually, you can.